like it's recording on my thing, but yes, oh, yes, yes, it's recording. Yeah, it's okay. Yes. Thank you. Maybe it was good that I didn't talk about sleeping tablets while it was recording. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's pushing. <laughs> um, well, thanks so much for joining today. Firstly, I have to apologize. My presentation slides aren't um, sharing on my screen, so I'm having technical difficulties. But we're just going to um, talk about the wonderful itinerary that um, Archna and Brenda and Michael have put together for the wonderful Dubai. So um, the Dubai present the Dubai trip is happening in February of next year, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, February. Yes. Um, you're arriving in Dubai on February 5th. So for those of you that don't know, you're going to leave um, the US and you're going to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. So you'll just say you, you leave on a Tuesday, you'll arrive there on the Wednesday. So you always fly um, during the night. Mm -hmm. Now, has anybody traveled with Go Away yet? I don't think so. The first one is going to be in October. It's, it's so, Thailand. Yeah, so you don't know how we operate yet, but I think after the Thailand trip, you will be really, really happy. Um, everything that Go Away does is private and customized. So whenever you land in the airport, I'm going to specifically talking about Dubai now, when you land in Dubai airport, literally you'll walk through, it's firstly, it's the most impressive airport that you've ever been to, okay? Mm -hmm. It sort of sets the tone of the trip when you arrive into Dubai airport. Um, you'll arrive, you'll clear customs, and then you'll have a lovely sign saying, go babe, see you be your mm -hmm. start of your holiday when you arrive. And I will say our suppliers, our partners, should I say, in Dubai are phenomenal. They're absolutely amazing. So um, they'll greet you right there at the airport and you have a guide throughout your trip. Um, from a go away perspective, firstly, I didn't even say who I am, Jennifer, by the way, and I'm the senior reservations and what is my title now? Senior reservations and sales manager. And Archana is um, our group specialist for Africa. Archana is a pillar of knowledge the girl has traveled all over the world and um is amazing at what she does so she did really put a great mm. itinerary together for dubai sorry i should have said that at the beginning but um whenever you arrive into into dubai you'll be greeted by our partners they're going to bring you into the hotel now archie did we confirm the hotel if we got the and which one are we you're on mute Yes, we did. Uh, so the hotels that are confirmed for the group are Millennium uh, Palace Place uh, by Marina. It is set right on the Marina. And in uh, Russell Kaima, we are doing the Double Tree by Hilton, uh, which is again a beach resort. So the property has its own beach. It's not a public beach, uh, so it is a private beach. But yes, there will be outsiders coming in, meaning people who are using the hotel facilities like the restaurants, clubs, the bars, they would also have access to the beach. And both these properties are amazing, like in terms of location, in terms of amenities, in terms of accessibility to places. The Millennium Place uh, where you would be booked in Dubai is uh, very close to a beach. It is in the marina, but very close to something called the Hidden Beach. So that is one. And the other thing is it's close to the Ibn Battuta Mall. So people who are wanting to shop, Dubai is a great destination for shopping. Again, all of you know. So whenever there's time uh, on the itinerary, I think uh, Brenda and Michael have been um, uh, you know, have always been thoughtful. I feel like they said they didn't want to pack an itinerary. They wanted right. the babes to have some time, be able to explore things on their own while they're still trying to do things that are supposed to be done while in Dubai. So there is a lot of time for leisure where you can go shopping and indulge. And in terms of restaurants and all of that, very closely located, all walkable and even otherwise, uh, the taxis are very cheap, so not expensive. So if you're looking at what is out of your pocket, it's not going to be too much unless until you're going to overindulge in some love. So the taxi ride to downtown Dubai, like say Sheikh Zayed's Road, where um, the Dubai Mall is located. So all of these would cost you between 7 to $14. And again, it's like if you're sharing three people, it's barely mm -hmm. anything. So yeah. yeah. So these are amazing hotels. You definitely would not be dis disappointed, I'm sure. Mm. I mean, the views from the hotels are stunning. The restaurants inside, I mean, like, they're fabulous. You're going to see so. how the other half live, by the way. I don't know how you live, yeah. because I'm yeah. telling you, 
it's so funny the the police cars they don't drive Fords or Dodges in Dubai they're in Ferraris and Lamborghinis <laughs> like that it's just it's it's a different it really is a different world and that the mm. tone is set from the moment that you arrive at the airport it is it's extreme wealth but you know what it's one of those plates just lap it up while you're there enjoy right. it um so whenever you arrive so you will be checked into your hotel and then you do have a welcome dinner included that night as well okay now the following morning breakfast is included daily and again choices from like you will not starve okay <laughs> they the meal the hotels will cater for every palate out there so really really good high good standard of breakfast that morning the following morning which i love you do have some free time which I think is so important, um, where you can just find your bearings. And as Archana said, you're very, very close to a lot of the amenities, the marina area, go do some star spotting, look at the most incredible yachts that you'll ever see. It's just, if you're into people watching, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like really good. Yeah. You like that, Tara, do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I love it too. And like, <laughs> you cannot beat people watching in Dubai because everything, you know, it's all walks of life. It's just the craziest thing ever. But um, after that, one of my favorite activities that you're doing is you have the private yacht experience. So, like, honest to God, you cannot follow your it. face right now. <laughs> oh, listen, it is. And I was, do you know what I follow? Yeah. I don't know about you guys. I'm always on Instagram and I'm influenced all of the time. And you know, when you're just sitting there and you're looking at these private yachts in Dubai, you're going, and this is your own exclusive private yacht experience and you're yeah. going to go on you have a spectacular dinner you've got you're just going to be wined and dined it's absolutely amazing I think that goes on for about three hours so you're yeah. going around um you're cruising along the Dubai coastline so again if you're on Instagram you have your phone out because you're going to see the Burj Khalifa which is the tallest building in the world you're going to see the Atlantis which is the famous hotel like everywhere you look is that Instagrammable picture on your own private yachts. We're taking our cameras. We have to figure out what we're going to wear. Because I can <laughs> that imagine. That was just going through my head. What am I going to wear? Too. Like what? I feel like sheer. I don't know. I, I just. I feel like you just I, have to be fabulous, Brenda. Like, yeah. Because like, you normally do a theme, don't you? Do you do a theme? Well, we, well, we typically will do like a flying dress every time we do. We go on destination. But. This is just like calling for a whole new, I don't, I don't even know. I've never photographed on a yacht before. Something oh. sophisticated. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Glamorous. 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 You know, a pretty yes. woman type. Yeah. Just fabulousness. Yes. I'm so packing my bag and joining you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you to start thinking of colors or whatever. I don't know, but my brain's all excited about that now. Normally the vibrant colors look so fabulous against the water and stuff and yeah. it'll, be absolutely, it'll be gorgeous. So then after you're going to have your dinner on, on board the yacht. So it does, it's a barbecue style dinner. Soft drinks are included. I think alcohol may be extra Archna. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. But again, things are reasonably priced. You would think for being such an affluent country that things would be crazy. It's really not. Now, don't get me wrong. There are places that are ridiculously expensive, but you can spend as as much or as little as you like when you're in Dubai. Um, so after that night, obviously, you're going to be transferred back to your hotel. You're actually very, very close to the, um, re the hotel where the boat is going to be departing. And the next day, you'll get up, you'll enjoy your delicious breakfast. And then I'm reading this off my phone in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, because I said technical mm -hmm. difficulties here. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a full day um, Dubai city tour, which is great because you're doing old town meets new town and they are completely completely different um absolutely incredible you are going to the um you'll stop off by the burj al arab which is definitely a photo opportunity you go to um the jumeirah mosque so again the mosques are incredible they're such beautiful buildings now i don't believe you're going yeah you're you're stopping outside of us yeah so it's it's a photo shop you're going to go to the so, Bastille so area. To, excuse me. So, so at that mosque, since we're not going inside, head covering is not a is not an issue then on this. No, on this it's side. only when you go. Now they do say if uh, Archie, you can probably answer this better. Should you even if you're on the grounds be covered? 
Um, no, so this is just a photo stop. So you would be outside of the mosque, but, but for you to enter, another thing is not every mosque is something that's allowed for everyone to enter. There are restrictions. So for this particular mosque, you don't have to be covered. Uh, you know, the right, I mean, there, uh, the, what I, I did share like the dress code, right? So there is no dress code as such for this day because you're not entering any of the religious places or the mosque. So you can just be covered in your cat. I mean, you can just be in your casuals and yeah, you'll just be outside of the mosque unless until you want to check with the guy to have access to the mosque, they would advise. And in terms of head covering, that would be only applicable on this itinerary when you're visiting Abu Dhabi. The Grand mm. Mosque. So otherwise, I think, uh, yeah, you could still pretty much wear the typical casual touristy <laughs> clothes. Mm. So yeah, it's really just important if you're going inside any of the religious buildings and be aware, like you are in a Muslim country where the rules can be quite strict. So it's just being like, you know, if you're outside a mosque, don't be having your bikini top on. It's probably not appropriate. Just having, a, you know, some wits about you, but it is very westernized in so many ways as well but it's just having that awareness of you about you. Um, so after that, you're stopping. That's a photo opportunity there. Then you are heading off to the Dubai Museum where um, you're actually get, going into the museum, correct, Artana? Yes, they, they wouldn't be able to, but uh, they will. Uh, we will know closer to the date because sometimes this museum is closed because this is Friday, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on what time. And it is not... Um, something that would take a lot of time. So even if you were to access, it's like just a quick uh, round about the museum and you'd be out. Yeah. And then you're going to go and take a water taxi now that's called the Abra Ride, and that's going to bring you into Old Town. And then you're going to go to the gold and the spice markets. So mm. if any of you are Sex in the City fans, like you remember yeah. they went around and they're going yeah. into the different markets. This is the type of vibe that's going to be there. So just the smells, the mm. it, 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 it's you have to be there to imagine it. Wow. So you can pick up all of your produce there. Absolutely incredible barter. Okay, mm. it's, it is all about bartering when you're there. Okay, and have a bit of fun with it. They're well used to it. I don't know if there's a certain people tend to say about fifty. If they say it's a hundred off or fifty, and then you know go from there. But wow. Um, that is that is all part of the fun. Um, yeah. After that, that then you're going to go to the top of the Burj Khalifa, so that mm. is the tallest building in the world. So um, you can imagine what your photos are going to be oh, like there. And then the Pam Jumeirah is that going to be just a photo shop? Are yes. You so you would okay. be driving through that area, the Jumeirah area, where you'd also see the beach residences. And it's not something that you're getting off or entering a place. It's just a drive by. And if uh, traffic permits, there would be photo stops in these places. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you've got literally this is going to be a fun. You've got lunch included that day. This is a fun filled packed day, but you're really, really going to get a good feeling of Dubai in that day, a real good overview of um, of the city. The next day is my favorite day. Actually, I'm toying between this and the yacht because I like both. Mm, but yeah. uh, the following morning, you're going to wake up again to your delicious breakfast. And then in the afternoon, you are heading off on safari. OK, so it's it's like the desert safari. So it's different to the safari we were just talking about a few moments ago. With yes, yes. In Tanzania or South Africa. This is where you're getting on the four wheel drives. The picture you've probably all seen the pictures again on Instagram where you're literally in the Sahara. It is just pure desert and you're going around in these fancy Jeeps. So um, it is an absolute incredible experience. Um, Archana, how far from the hotel will it take them to get out into the desert? So this shouldn't take you long. Uh, within one hour, again, Dubai traffic can be crazy, but our, our ground handlers would let you know the day ahead or that day morning. So the guides are amazing. Like they will tell you like 
on dot what time you'll get that they know it best uh, because they are the ones operating the ground logistics so it, you would probably start past lunch um, probably I would say around uh, two the goal is to get uh, to the desert uh, by around three ish so you're there in time you finish all the dune bashing and you're there for sunset and then you are into the camp enjoying all of the nightly entertainment and all of that yes <laughs> And what they do is, so again, from a picture perspective, we've seen a lot of those flying dress. Um, yes. On the top of a there. dune. Oh, yes. Incredible. Again, that co the colors against the sand is incredible. But you also, um, it's such an experience. So you do the dune bashing tip for you. We've had people who say they want to drive the, you know, the Jeeps and stuff. You can't. From a safety no. perspective, they don't allow it. But it's a bit of a thrill ride. Like it is a bit, you know, it's not your regular, it's it's crazy, but it's so much fun. And they are pros, okay? We mm. don't fuck with cowboys. It's not that there's anything wrong with cowboys, but you know yeah. what I mean? They're <laughs> legit, well insured. They're, they're great companies that we deal with. So after you do the doom bashing and you're all like, what the hell just happened? It's so <laughs> much fun. You'll take your photos and all that stuff. You'll go into the camp and this isn't your regular camp. This is, again, the Middle East opulence. They'll welcome you with an Arabic cup of coffee, their traditional coffee. You'll have the belly dancers. You're going to have the most amazing barbecue meal. And you're so, I'm not sure, are they there for sunset, Archana? There's probably a good yes. chance that you're there for sunset. So it's, yes. again, I think of sex in the city. You know, that sort of feel where they're sitting out there and these really good looking men are serving yeah. the Arabic coffee and beautiful women doing belly dancing it's an experience and the entertainment is phenomenal mm. and again top-notch dinner as well and then once all the entertainment the nightly entertainment's over and you finish your dinner then you're going to again private transfer back to your hotel so just want to reiterate as well everything all of the transfers that are provided are all exclusive for your own group okay there's going to be no random tom dick and harry's jumping on board as well this is yeah. all exclusive for your group so you're going to they are yeah yes sorry my son is talking to me he's a saved yeah. granddad um so yeah then you're going to head back to your hotel and the following day then you'll get up again your delicious breakfast and you're going to go to abu dhabi so distance from i didn't do abu dhabi yet distance from dubai archna one and a half hours uh, okay. again depending on traffic you can get there even in an hour Okay, and this is actually uh, the United Emirates capital. So one of the what you will visit is um, the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque, which is probably one of the most famous mosques in the world. Just Google it to see the pictures. You know, it's that white marble, palatial, absolutely spectacular. You will need to have your headscarf when you're there. But again, even pictures look beautiful when you're doing that. So just mm -hmm. make sure that you have um, the pictures. It's also important to note it is going to be hot. So there will be um, bottles of water and everything provided on the bus every day or on your transfer every day, okay? So it's important. I would also bring refillable bottles. Mm -hmm. They're a great idea because there's lots of water stations about the place that you can just fill up as you go along. So we recommend that. So you are going to the Sheikh Said Grand Mosque. Um, you are going to, I'm just reading there, it says, your, um, the founder, it says it has 82 domes, more than a thousand columns and 24 carat gold glided chandeliers with mm. the world's largest hand knotted carpet. So yeah. you're going to see opulence on a whole other level. OK, um, then you're going to it's a photo shop at the Emirates Palace, Abu Dhabi Hotel, which is one of the world's um, most expensive hotels. Mm. Wonder, wonder how much it costs to stay there. Then you are stopping off at the Abu Dhabi Corniche and Breakwater. So again, this is a photo opportunity for you. Um, Archana, can you talk to the Qasar al-Watan or the Palace of Nations? Yes, uh, before that, I want to go back to Emirates Palace Abu Dhabi. Uh, the, uh, while you're there, though this is a photo stop, you can always ask the guide. There will be opportunity for you to have the cappuccino topped with gold, like yeah. real gold. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that is one option. It can be pre-booked. I, uh, I did not code it. But yes, I think that's fantastic experience for people wow. who love coffee. 
because not many places in the world serve cold coffee. So no. <laughs> how much yeah. is that, Archana? Do we know? The uh, cost? I think it's about uh, sixty-three dollars on net. So yeah, maybe we can but share I'll one or something. Once in a lifetime, though. <laughs> yeah. They'll be like, we have one coffee for t one coffee for twenty people, please. Pass it around. Yeah, but who gets one the first sip? sip? That's the gold <laughs> subway on top. Hmm. Of course, but Brenda isn't it? Does. Rock, isn't paper, scissors. Yeah. I know. Rock, paper, scissors. It's just crazy that people pay that for a cup of coffee. Yes. Uh, we <laughs> have to. But let's we see what do. we could do for the group. Like, if we have 16 people, let's see if we can bring down the pricing. Yes. Uh, if people are interested, I see Tara already looked excited oh, when yeah. I mentioned it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so maybe we can see if that can be done at a reasonable price where everyone gets to experience it. And again, um, coming to uh, Qasar al-Watan. So this again is the presidential palace. Uh, this is a photo stop. If time permitting, they will take you to some parts of the palace. So it is also called the palace of nation because obviously uh, the president sits in there. And uh, again, everything's to do with opulence while in Abu Dhabi as well. I mean, Dubai is one level. Abu Dhabi is whole another level. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Above Dubai, you mean? Well, yes. Why it's not? quieter. It's quieter. Dubai makes all the noise, whereas Abu Dhabi, extreme luxury, all of that is there, but quieter, low key kind mm -hmm. of a thing. So, they have the Louvre Museum. That's not part of the tour, but you know, those kind of things like mm -hmm. absolute luxury is in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Wow. Whole yeah. different world. So yes. and there is a stop. So you said there's a stop, a photo opportunity at the Louvre and the the Ferrari World um photo stop as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. And then there will now, be, it will just be a photo stop. So when I say when it says like Ferrari World, so it's basically a theme park and it's supposed to be the world's largest uh, Ferrari sign and. Wow. That is why it is significant that we have this as a photo stop. You may not, you may go to Maranello in Italy, but you don't have that big a size. You can only drive the Ferrari, but there's no signage as such as big mm -hmm. as this to take photos. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what people that's do funny. in Abu Dhabi. So yeah. Yeah, you'll not be disappointed. And then so it's breakfast and lunch included that day. Then you're going to go back to Dubai, take the drive back to Dubai. Um, Archna, am I right in saying you're crossing a border when you go into Abu Dhabi? Uh, yeah, I mean, you are within the United Arab Emirates, so you're just crossing uh, one state to the other, like what we do here, state, they call the em uh, Emirates. So mm -hmm. instead of states, they call it the Emirates. It's a different state. And yeah, there's no border crossing or immigration or none of it. It's you're part of the, I mean, it is all part of the UAE. Uh -huh. Okay, now the next day, and Archie, you'll have to talk to this because I've not been to Raz al Kalmia. Am I saying that right? <laughs> okay, so Russell you Kalmia. Yes. Yes. So the next day after breakfast, so, okay, let me come to this. Like um, Abu Dhabi, the day that this day you need to dress modestly, like they expect, of course, apart from the head covering. Shots and short sleeves like sleeveless or tank tops are not allowed um, for visiting the Grand Mosque. So it is recommended that everybody wears clothing that covers their arms like full length on a sleeve probably. And similarly with uh, pants like uh, even for men, no shorts allowed. We need to wear full pants, trousers. And in case you miss your head covering, there is a place that you could rent uh, head coverings at a price. That is something that our guides uh, locally can organize. But I would suggest just carry your own, like just a scarf would do just to cover yourself. And uh, it's only within Sheikh Zayed Mosque. Once you're outside of the mosque, you don't have to be wearing the uh, head covering unless until you feel happy wearing it. <laughs> I did. I did wear it throughout Abu Dhabi. So <laughs> and uh, transfer to Russell Kaima. So day six uh, after breakfast, you check out. So this day is an early day. So you start an early day, meaning it's after breakfast about 839. 
you check out of your hotel in Dubai and then get transferred to Ras Al Khaimah. Ras Al Khaimah is another uh, emirate uh, part of the UAE. You will be driving through very different landscape, similar to what you would see in Utah, but not the red rocks of Utah, slightly different. Very beautiful, very spectacular. The roads are amazing, very Instagrammable. The entire drive in itself is in so Russell Kaima is about one and a half hours, depending on the traffic. But uh, in my experience, at that time of the day, you wouldn't because it's onward traffic to Russell Kaima, not the written. So you should get there pretty soon, maybe in time for lunch. And you arrive there. Russell Kaima is uh, known for a lot of adventure activities for anyone who is interested in adventures like zip lining. And they're very very different from what you would have experienced in North America. I wouldn't compare it with what the adventures in New Zealand, but somewhere in between, you know. Mm. So it's it's a very nice thing to do when you have. I mean, the two days that you'd be spending in Russell Kaima is completely time at leisure, either by the beach. Uh, Russell Kaima is also known for lakes. It's also got some desert safaris that you could do, but I wouldn't suggest because you've already done something that is already the best, mm. and. Uh, great place for photography and this is very less crowded compared to dubai after all the hustle and hustle you're in a quieter place more relaxed environment and uh, yeah the hotel that you'd be staying in uh is uh did i mention it's double tree by yeah. hilton yeah. marjan island so Marjan Island is slightly away from uh, the central uh, downtown Ras Al Khaimah. When I say downtown Ras Al Khaimah, it's um, not very far. I would say about 30 minutes or something. So it is still accessible if you want to get to the downtown, do some shopping. UAE is known for shopping, but again, yeah, the best is always in Dubai. So Ras Al Khaimah still is good place for shopping and uh, dining experiences. So in case you want to go something outside of the um, hotel, you do have options. Uh, again, commute is uh, less expensive in this place as well, like Dubai. And uh, yeah, the hotel has its own beach. There is a rooftop bar, there is a pool bar, sun deck, plenty of things. So there's tons to do within the resort in itself to enjoy and unwind. And the next day, again, we have an entire day at leisure where you can enjoy the beach. And these beaches are very different, like they're turquoise blue beaches, nice, mm. less crowded. So yes, I wouldn't say it's it would be you might feel exclusive, but definitely less crowd crowded compared to the beaches in Dubai. And I think it's a weekday that you're there, eleventh of February. Mm -hmm. So yes, makes it all the more less crowded. So you know what's yeah. lovely? It's so lovely to have this area included on your itinerary because mm. a lot of people stick with Dubai and they'll yeah. do the day trip to Abu Dhabi. But as I mentioned about Archana, she is tra world traveled. And she had said to me, she's like, we need to be selling more of this desk, this area of the Emirates because it's got so much to offer. And I said, it's sort of an escape from the craziness mm. of Dubai. So it's mm. nice to have a, a full experience of mm. the United Emirates. In, I have in, to apologize for the four-year-old in the background. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Ar Arjuna, could, could you speak to, so we have some, the, on days of leisure, let's say three of the ladies want to go in town to shop or four people want to go to a certain restaurant they've heard of. Can you mm -hmm. talk about safety and? and Absolutely. So the whole of UAE is very, very safe. I think you will be in the safest part of it, I would say. So it's absolutely safe. You don't have to fret being out late hours or early hours or any time of the day, as long as like we are we know how to conduct ourselves in a foreign land, which I'm sure all in the group would. So that apart, I don't think you need to be uh, scared of anything. You are very safe in terms of uh, crime and all of that. Crime is taken extremely serious uh, in this part of the world. Um, you would know from news in the past and also. So yes, it is absolutely safe for just women to be out also. I've been out late in the night all by myself. 
So mm -hmm. it's absolutely safe and it's not difficult to find taxis and it's not, uh, you wouldn't find anyone sketchy. So mm. <laughs> it's not say. tolerated. That's the thing. It's, yeah, like it's not tolerated know, there. It's, not, yeah. it's probably the safest place from a tourist perspective to go to yes. in the world in the sense that, but as Archana said, you have to be respectful again that this is a Muslim country. They don't, um, crime is sort of non-existent to a certain extent, yeah. but again, people, frolicking on the beach and stuff like that that's where um you just have to be mindful that it is a muslim country as well but women walking around to, you know on your own perfectly safe really 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 safe yes you can venture out late until how long you want and um oh, another thing is this is a beach destination of course like uh, however wearing a swimwear uh, in public areas of the hotel like the lobby and all of these places is not uh, acceptable well yes you might find people doing it but i would suggest my groups not to do it because we just need to be respectful to local cultures and religion while we are traveling while we still want to have fun and there is no uh, restriction as such. Uh, I recall Brenda and Michael asking me the very first, first time, like, is it mm -hmm. okay for our babes to, you know, be dressed in a certain way, be in this part? So the hotels we picked also are uh, Western hotels. So we wanted hotels that will be more accepting, more inclusive. So the reason why uh, these hotels are finalized is precisely this we just want the group to be comfortable all through mm -hmm. however we still need to maintain certain decorum in regards to you know being respectful to read uh, local culture and religion so yeah thank you and uh, yes shorts okay or is it long pants or long sleeves no short sleeves they're they're perfectly fine holly like it's absolutely fine to be wearing shorts and short sleeves and stuff like that okay. as archon said it's just thank you it's just um if you're in the lobby you know the way if you're in mexico for example you could walk down to the lobby maybe in your bikini top and you know in your swimming suit it's just in yeah i'll fix it it's just you've locked it now Keen, because you put the code in so many times okay one nine eight two okay apologies guys yeah well, I will unlock it. So um, it's just shorts and stuff is absolutely fine. It's just if you're in the lobby, you want to make sure you're not just in your swimming suit. But as Archie said, pool area, beach, absolutely fine. It's just having that awareness. And these hotels are completely westernized. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So you can you can dress in casuals, Holly, throughout the trip, except for the times where you are uh, visiting a mosque that is Abu Dhabi, uh, the Grand Mosque only. So otherwise, I think you're okay uh, in shots, or both for men and women. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. Yeah. Right. And uh, day eight. So day eight uh, is the day you depart. And depending on the flights, the hotel checkout uh, is going to be in the morning around 1030, between 1030, 12. So I think Russell Kaima is 12. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. So you check out at 12. However, uh, the flights, I'm not sure if the flights are already made, uh, Michael and Brenda. No, no, no. But they're going to be like, what was it? 1 a.m. If yeah, I remember it was, right or so. It's 520. It was 520 a.m. Yes, 520 a.m. 5 a.m. But don't worry, don't fret. Uh, I'm having that covered for you. I'm trying to see what best we could do. So the flight is uh, from Dubai. So Russell Kaima to Dubai. So we n require minimum six hours. So we do, though the travel time is just one hour, we don't want to risk because these are international flights. So the transfer will be six hours prior to your flight. Uh, so it so happens the best fare and the best connections currently are available on Qatar Airways, which is what Brenda and Michael would have recommended and would be recommending. And this flight departs Dubai at 5.20 a.m. on the 13th uh, February, whereas you are supposed to check out the hotel in Ras al Khaimah on the 12th uh, afternoon. So I've given like we're working on a couple of options how this can be eased so it won't be a long day because this we understand is an extremely long flight uh, about 13 hours we're talking about. So yeah we'll see what we could do I've requested for a late checkout so if guaranteed late checkout obviously comes with a price and currently I think it's costing about 65 or 69 dollars let me just check. 
70, mm -hmm. I think. Yes, it's costing an additional of 70, but I'm trying to see if we could get that to midnight. So you check out mm -hmm. at midnight mm -hmm. and transfer to the airport. So even if you get to the airport, you will be six hours ahead. So which means uh, you quite technically have about four hours reducing the time that's used for lug luggage drop and customs. Uh, I mean, all of those immigration checks, all of that. So there also is an option, Brenda and Michael, I didn't discuss it with you guys also because I just learned about it this morning. So we should be able to, I mean, if the group is interested, we could organize for lounge services at the mm -hmm. airport, which is the Ahalan lounge. So what, if we book this lounge service, you could access this lounge for about four hours. And this includes um, beverages, alcoholic, non-alcoholic, a cold buffet, hot buffet, and also access to a shower. So mm -hmm. that is one option. The other option for people who are interested in shopping is they don't want to do late checkout. You check out as per the hotel schedule, 12 noon, and then we take you to the Dubai mall, mm. one and a half hours drive, arrive, spend solid six to seven hours shopping in Dubai mall because even like 48 hours is not sufficient for the amount of mm -hmm. shopping that we have in Dubai <laughs> mall. So it's not just shopping, yeah. right? Yeah, you can take it, take it, go on the slopes if you fancy skiing in Dubai, yeah. with yes. Dubai mall. Wow. Ski, uh, there is an under, underwater a zoo, a uh, aquarium otherwise called the underwater zoo that tons to see do everything is big so this is one of the biggest aquariums on planet so yes it's not just shopping that you'll experience in dubai mall so so our luggage would just stay in the van yes so and, and if you're going to opt for this we will uh, make sure the luggage stays in the van it is safe uh, our tour guide will be there so you can just take your handbag whatever is important with you so you don't have to carry it with you the whole day just something that is essential important like passports and things don't leave them in the bus just keep them to yourself and yeah, you could spend the day there, have dinner. I've also made some recommendations of restaurants where you could get a dinner. It might be expensive, but these are amazing restaurants. So the option that I had given uh, for dining was a Labanese restaurant. In terms of location, these are fine dining restaurants. And um, yes, you wouldn't find uh, the same experience anywhere else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the reason why we recommend these, fun. though, they're slightly priced high. Um, and they could accommodate our, a group. Absolutely. So yeah. they need to be pre-booked. I was just looking at the name. So the, the restaurant that I have made recommendation was Abdul Wahab Saak Al Bahar. So this is a Labanese restaurant and they serve like a, a meze kind of a thing, which is a shared meal. It's like mm -hmm. a huge, uh, what do you say? A plate containing food that can cater to about seven to eight people like it's a mm. sharing plate, they call it. Mm -hmm. So that is an option. If not, if you feel that is a slightly pinching pocket for someone, there are tons of options. Um, you could go on your own and yes, you can explore. What, what, and what does pinching pocket mean? Yeah, well, what, what, what? So this one is priced at... Um, let me tell you, the farewell dinner at Abdul Wahab Saak Al Bahar costs about $152. Wow. Wow. Yes. Is that per, per, person, a per person, Archana, to enjoy yes. the sharing place? Yeah, it's, it's it quite is. pricey. It's an experience, though, but you but, might think that people don't want to. Exactly. Deep. Yeah. It, it is an option. The reason why yeah. we leave it as an option is there, but from what we have seen, I think 80% of our groups take it. They just mm. take it because uh, they spend about four hours having a fabulous time uh, wrapping uh, up their trip uh, of Dubai because this particular hotel uh, restaurant uh, has views of the Burj Khalifa, uh, the fountains okay. uh, are at the Dubai Mall. The views are spectacular. So Can we reserve the link so we can look at that restaurant. I will. I would. Sorry, that's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're just taking our central apologies. Yeah, we, we don't have anyone to join us. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's refreshing to see your daughter, Arch, next. I just got rid of my son. <laughs> yeah. I hope my son doesn't come. So, <laughs> so yes. Um, 
Yeah, I will try to share. I wish I could share it now, but unfortunately, I don't know why my share my share button wouldn't yeah. work. I, I'm hitting. It's just frozen. I don't oh. know why. It's so strange. It doesn't happen, but unfortunate. But I'm going to share that with uh, Michael and Brenda, Sotara, Holly, or whoever is interested. Cat, yeah. uh, you know, just look through these. And even if you could just open the website, you could just Google these places. Mm -hmm. They're phenomenal, like, you know, amazing, like the restaurants are. And also in Dubai, I have to mention, like Jennifer uh, mentioned in the start, things can be super expensive and things can be as affordable as they can be. So when she means affordable, it's not like mediocre service for an affordable thing. Say, for instance, you're paying a $50 or something doesn't mean you're going to get a mediocre experience. It's going to be five star experience here. A $50 will still give you a below average experience, mm -hmm. I would say in North yeah. America. But yeah. there in Dubai, you would not be disappointed. Every penny that you put in there is really worth the price. So, yeah. Um, Holly or Tara, do you either of you have a specific question? I don't have anything specific. The only yeah. thing I'm thinking of now is the airline. Are there any little things we should know about it? Um, yes. So th not many options. Uh, the Qatar is the best, but to be honest, it's not just Qatar. Even if you were to choose Emirates or any uh, other airline, the flights departing Dubai to North America typically would be late hours, early hours. So it's not just your group. Every group that travels or every FIT, even like individuals traveling, they don't have options but to take these flights because all the flights are scheduled that time around. The good thing here is um, you, uh, if you're flying uh, Qatar, like I was telling Brenda and Michael, they're offering amazing prices currently. It's about like 700 to 800 or so. Again, subject to availability. It's super cheap. Typically, this route would cost anywhere between 1200 If lucky, 950 Nothing mm -hmm. under is ever possible. But currently, Qatar is giving that great airfare. And Qatar is, a, I would say, five-star plus airline. Wow. Phenomenal yes. airline. In comparison to any of the American carriers that you're used to, yes. these... Middle wow. Eastern carriers are like they they're amazing. Absolutely. Yes. Incredible. So, so what, about, what about carry on? What are what are the. Yeah. So what you, so the you can go 23 kilos and then you can take your carry on as well, which 10 seven kg. Yeah, yeah, seven, seven. kg. OK, so it's more about 14 pounds or so. Uh, 15. I'm sorry. What was that? I'm sorry. I missed that. Archana, go ahead. Yes, so the check, everyone gets a check luggage allowance, uh, be it Emirates or Qatar, will be 23 kilos. And uh, yeah, and cabin would be seven. Seven. That What's is your carry on, kilos? seven kgs. Yeah, yeah. Kilos, so that's, yeah. About, that's about almost 20 pounds then for your carry on, correct? Or for so carry on. Around, yeah, yeah. For carry on. So 50 pounds for your big suitcase. And then carry on well, is yeah okay so if you're checking luggage you mean it's 50 pounds yeah yeah but and it's only 20 pounds for carry, your on. carry on yeah for your carry on if you're taking a backpack or if you're and you can take a backpack and a personal item as well and i will say like the likes of you know emirates or qatar and that they're not like some of the american carriers that are really really strict like yes, they're they're a different carrier. They're a different carrier, mm. so a different field. They're not nickel and diming you over being a pound over or a pound mm. under. It's just for your carry-ons. The important thing is that it goes into the overhead mm. compartment. Mm -hmm. That's the most important thing. But as I said, they're they're phenomenal service, and we actually mm. just had the Qatar airline rep doing training with us a couple of weeks ago, and their new planes and everything are just. Mm second and like really really wow. really tough. even from a food perspective on board which i never rate airline food the food is fantastic on these mm -hmm. carriers so mm -hmm. really 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 good yeah all right are we flying over on that Qatar also yeah it'll be round trip if we're looking yeah. at yes. yes yeah it should be round trip same air same airline yeah. and the land that would be chicago too. Sorry, yeah. it would be Chicago if you're flying out of Chicago. Chicago, Doha, Doha, um, 
Dubai. The layover in uh, Doha for the flights that we were looking at is not bad. It's about two and a half to three hours, something that's needed. And Hamad International Airport, Qatar, Doha is also a stunning place. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, Dubai Airport has tons mm. of things to do. That is again shopping. You can overindulge in shopping, and it's mm -hmm. of course duty free. Where the duty free, not like oh, what yeah. we have in the states. So yeah, yeah. Wow. All right. I, Any I questions? Think you can my questions. Yeah, yeah. It every time I think the next trip's the best, then I get excited about. <laughs> You know, it's oh it's away. And now you've got me excited about the, the South Africa. South Africa 2026. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, then we all see how to. Excited about that. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. it's it's so hard and people ask me all the time well what else is coming up and i was like seriously we have so much coming up but there is more we're all there is more yeah that's the great thing about travel though there's literally yes. so many places to go to and yeah it's it's exciting yes. and you're the destinations you've chosen are literally amazing they're bucket oh, list trips they yes really exactly yeah. Well, thank you for for talking with us and and you'll send us a link so we can share the recording. Um, I'm excited to yeah, get working too. on this. Just apologies. I couldn't share the presentation side of things yeah. because yeah. Um, I'm coming live from Ireland and my computer's playing up and yeah. apologies for the little addition of the four year old. Oh, well, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. And thanks to you two for making it thank work you. today. Thank no you. problem at all. Any questions, do reach out. And yeah. um, Brenda and Michael are special clients. And mm. also, we'll see what best we could do uh, to avoid the long uh, check out. I mean, check out and the flight, the time yeah. between that. We'll try to see. And also, I will try to work a better pricing for uh, the That's cappuccino, amazing. the gold cappuccino. <laughs> I think we need to yeah. do that. I think we need to do that. Yeah, that would be exciting. And yeah, yeah, not many places. Like I said, this is one of the places, and probably the other one is in Italy. So oh, the yeah. one in Italy is slightly different, but yes. Wow. So cool. yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for joining, guys.